So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about one of the most popular picks in Overwatch League so far, and that's actually the tank D.Va. And D.Va is really good on offense, especially good on defense when you're trying to stall, has a nice ultimate to pick off kills, and again stall. And a wall we're seeing literally like every single team picking up D.Va, especially on defense. A good pick right now in this meta, and I feel like she's just a really fun pick, can get a lot of kills. Today we're going to be watching, of course, Cool Mike playing D.Va on the Houston Outlaws is the team that I've been watching the most. And please, if you have a certain team or a certain character or a certain match you want me to talk about in the future, leave that down in the comment section down below because I'm mainly watching all the Outlaws matches and I can't really catch up on all the other characters. So please leave that down there. Anyways, we're going to get started right here. I think I should say about D.Va, I guess, is that um, we do see sometimes that she's switched out for some other tanks and sometimes you might want to switch her out for another main tank like a Reinhardt or maybe an Orisa or maybe even a Winston. But for the most part, you can pick her up, and especially if you're just, you know, half decent as the character, I feel like she can work in most situations, especially against Mercy, who's really good right now. Anyways, we're going to start it off with Jake, unfortunately, not getting any kills with that, but immediately switched to Matt, moving backwards. He realized that he was below half HP, started to back up, and starts to just flail around the air. That's what we want to do to make sure that it's the hardest possible way for the enemies to hit you while moving through the air. As well, when you are playing D.Va, when you get about a quarter HP or a half HP, always back up for the most part unless you have to finish off kills like that with we see matt doing on the enemies otherwise it's a good idea to play back a little bit all right now he pushes a bit far forward and i learned this from watching you know a few diva players you do want to push actually pretty far forward when you are in this mode to either die or to get your mech up really fast because when you're playing this diva without your mech you're not really going to be able to do way too much you kind of want to play risky in that sense if the enemies are especially staggered you can play especially risky um but after that of course go back go back into your mech who matt's going to be around the corner and a lot of the times as D.Va, you don't really want to be the frontline tank, and Matt's not going to play as the frontline tank. He's going to play next to the Winston, around the Winston, try to finish off kills, go in when he sees kills pretty low HP. We're going to switch to Linksters right here, just popping off a little bit, getting killed really quickly on that. Um, but as you see over there, Matt and the Winston are both just popping off, moving forward, and trying, uh, trying to finish some kills. And I think Matt's going to finish one maybe right here. Yeah, whatever. There's just a cluster in the right half. We switch back to Matt playing right here, though. Pushing up, finishing up that kill, finishing up the next kill. And as you see again, he isn't much past the Winston. He's almost always on the Winston. And when you're playing with the Winston, make sure to call out who you're going after and when you're going to go in. Because you want to kind of follow up on the Winston, wait for him to jump, him to put down the shield, and then you go immediately and try to get a pick. But before that, you also want to make sure that you're behind the Winston so that you can block all the damage that's going to be thrown at him with your uh, shield. So that's pretty nice on this character with the defense matrix. Sorry, not the shield. Oh, that's kind of weird. Uh, Jake's going to be pushing at the top of the screen right there again. A lot of the times, Matt will try to get high ground to stop the enemies from playing on high ground, but since the enemies have the majority of their players pushing up through the middle, he's going to try to put up pressure right there, push the enemy D.Va back a little bit, fly through the air again, you know, doing whatever. We're going to switch off to Rockus playing on the sideline. You know, whatever with that. And again, D.Va just staying very close to everybody else and finally finishes off the enemy diva diva versus diva is kind of a weird matchup what you want to try to do is try to bait out the enemy missiles as much as you can you could also fly around the air to try to make them miss as many as they can and then after you bait out their defense matrix go in for your own and it's really kind of a hard matchup but you know whatever it can work out pretty well and right now we see that both teams are playing diva both of them have their ultimates up so we're gonna have to wait and see which team does it a little bit better with that ultimate we're gonna switch back to jacob here Diva is, for the most part, cool, Matt. Um, playing pretty far down, not really playing right up next to the enemies. Jake walks up and just bops the enemy Mercy. Speaking of Mercy, if you are playing Diva, you can actually go after her pretty dang well. And right there, Matt gets a nice kill on the uh, on the Winston. And that's the thing I also want to mention, though. If you are playing Diva against a Winston, always try to boot them. Always try to jump on them the second that they jump on your team. And if they if the enemy Winston isn't timed perfectly with his team. You should be able to win that team fight. And that's exactly what happened here. I got the kill on him. The rest of the team just went in. And that's just kind of how it went. Nothing way too fancy. He didn't have to pull off any super hard plays or anything. He just stayed calm. Stayed kind of right next to his team. And that's kind of how D.Va works right now. And personally, I've been playing D.Va probably as my most played hero for the last few hours. I have like seven or eight hours on this character. Really liking the character. And with that in mind, today I'm going to talk to you guys after that gameplay, I guess, about some other general tips that you can try to pull into your own ranked games one playing as D.Va. Now, of course, using that positioning that he was using and trying to finish off kills at the end, that's probably the most important thing to try to do. So try to follow that as much as you can. I know, of course, you can't always see exactly where he is because you don't always follow the D.Va, um, but try to do that. But other than that, here are a few good tips that I feel like can probably help you quite a bit as D.Va. And I've learned these from just my own gameplay, looking at top 500s, and from watching a ton of D.Va guides. So hopefully I can compress a lot of that information into one thing. So the first thing, a thing that I talked about a little bit ago, don't be the first one to initiate as D.Va. Unless you have like a Roadhog, then you kind of have to, but always play next to the other tank, not in front of them. Try to finish off kills when they get low. 
but don't try to be the one that's jumping in there because you can only block damage from in front of you and if people are next to you or above you or below you or any direction you're kind of screwed uh, <laughs> that's just the thing you want to keep in mind and if you initiate you won't really be able to get much kills with this character you just kind of be standing there and just be a walking ult charge so that's a thing to try to, try to keep in mind if you are playing with someone like let's say Zarya or like a Roadhog as I was saying earlier you still can do okay with them. I feel like it's very hard for you, not on King of the Hill, but on these other, you know, slow push maps, because you do have to make sure that you don't really engage. You just kind of wait for the enemy team to engage, and then you try to counter engage, and that's how you're gonna have to do that. And hopefully, just jump on either the enemy Reinhardt or Winston or even Diva to try to just poke them back as much as you can. Now, the next thing I want to say is that you want to try to finish off kills as Diva for essentially you you just want to target whoever your dps is targeting and target maybe even whoever your other tank is targeting you don't really want to target kills by yourself because while you can it is a lot more risky and as well it's going to take a lot longer time to kill you're probably going to have to waste your booster and it's just much better that if you see you know there's a hanzo being shot or mercy being shot you go with your team and take out that hanzo and then right after if you still have time you can go after that mercy Target prioritization, I'm going to talk about this right here, um, is very important as this character. If you can choose between a D.Va and a Mercy and your teammates aren't really shooting at anybody, or let's say a, another DPS and a Mercy and your teammates aren't shooting at anybody, you should go after the Mercy and try to finish her off. However, if you see that the Mercy is at full HP and no one's going after her, while there's someone like a Widowmaker at half HP and a lot of your teammates are going after her, you should go after the person that's an easier kill. While it might not be as an effective kill, It'll be a kill, and a lot of times against Mercy, that's full HP, she could be healed, she can get away, she has a lot of ways to just, you know, get out of there, um, and it'd be a lot more risky for yourself, because you're going to have to dive a lot further into the enemy backline, but let's say you go after the enemy Reaper that's already half HP that everyone's attacking, that should be a pretty obvious pick, and even though it's not, again, as good of a kill, it's a kill. Now, for the best combo that I've figured out and that I've heard to try to do, essentially what you want to do is hold the shoot button, press shift, or press your booster, and then E while you're boosting for the first second because there's a 0.5 second startup cooldown melee and then shoot for headshots. And when you are close range, when you get in this combo, let's say, let's say you don't finish off the enemy because they're a tank or something. And when you're close range, try to hit your shotguns as much as you can. Try to just aim, try to get headshots, do whatever you can like that. And don't really try to worry that much about the rockets. I mean, if you hit the rockets, that's just extra DPS that you can enjoy yourself with. But it's just a bonus plus. Don't focus on it because the rockets do less damage, less consistent. And even though they don't have damage fall off, and even though they have a lot of range, that's not something that you should try to focus on as much. Speaking of the rockets, the one thing I want to mention is that if you are on a map that is like Hanamura, or just a map that's kind of open at the beginning, always rocket the enemy spawns. And if you can get, let's say, um, like a Junkrat to help you, you might be able to get a kill. Or if you can just get a Mercy damage boost, you might be able to get a kill by yourself it sometimes happens or even if you can't get that you get at least about 10 percent of your ult charge so that's the thing you want to remember to do because it's just a plain out benefit and while diva's ult isn't always the most powerful in the game it can be if it's used in the correct situation mainly used with another one of your tanks or used to stall for time and that's kind of how you want to think about it can i get a kill with this with my tanks or with another combo ultimate or can i just stall that's kind of how you want to use the ult but anyways um there's all that stuff mixed together now, if you are, let's talk about your ult for a second right here. If you do want to use your ult, um, essentially what you want to try to do is to shoot your ult into the middle of the fight or shoot your ult just straight into the enemy backline um, when the enemy shield tank doesn't have their shield up. That's kind of what you want to do for going for kills. And as well, if you don't play way too much Devo, what you want to make sure to do if you're trying to ult in the middle of a fight is, you know, boost straight up into the air for about 1.5 seconds and then press the ult button and it'll fall down if you immediately shift and ult upwards it'll be too high to get any kills and for some reason for like a few days i couldn't figure this out because i'm dumb but that's what you do if you're a player that doesn't really play way too much diva and as well um sometimes you want the ult to blow up right behind the enemies instead of like super far behind the enemies again you might want to boost straight toward the enemy backline for like 1.7 seconds and then ult your ult will just go a little bit and then blow up and sometimes you can get some cheeky kills off of that and as well you can ult just towards certain walls that are like angled and sometimes it'll bounce off those walls or wall of those walls there's a lot of weird stuff you can do with this ultimate but it can be strong um just make sure to kind of figure out you know should we be going for kills for this or should i really just be saving this to try to stall or saving this to try to wave clear the point at the very end Something else that you should remember about positioning, I guess that's completely different from ult usage, is that you want to make sure that you aren't playing super far back. You don't want to be next to nobody. Unless, let's say, there's a Genji and a Tracer hurting your backline that you can shift around and boop around and make sure that they don't kill your Mercy, that can be good. But otherwise, you want to make sure that you're pretty close to the enemy front line. You aren't all the way up at it. You want to make sure there's a Reinhardt or a Zarya or a Wood, uh, Orissa or anything like that. 
in front of you but you want to make sure that you're pretty close because if you're any further than 10 meters you get huge damage fall off on your guns and you aren't going to do way too much you just want to make sure that you're close because as well you can finish off kills quickly with your booster unlike a lot of other tanks if you are living up pretty dang close for your matrix here's a pretty nice tip about this um you want to make sure that you're trying to flash your matrix as much as you can instead of just holding it and especially if it versus a DPS and a 1v1, you aren't really going to win against them if you just hold your matrix for two seconds straight while trying to boop them and then melee them and then, you know, shift straight into them. That's not really going to work for yourself. However, if you can get used to the enemy DPS's reload cycle, so let's say Tracer shoots a clip, so you defense matrix that, and then you shoot at her, and then you defense matrix the next clip, and then you shoot at her, and you just hold it for a little bit and then let go and hold it for a bit and then let go and hold it for a bit and then let go. That can actually win you a 1v1 a lot easier. It can stall you for a lot more time and can give your teammates more time to get to you. And yeah, it'll just increase your chance of being able to win that. And I guess if you're against a, someone like a soldier, make sure to try to do this especially. But as well, make sure to try to boop them off their healing packet because you can never kill a soldier when he's on his healing packet. But I mean, if, if you can do this, you might be able to live for a while and then maybe eventually kill him after his pack falls out if you need to do that. And one final thing I want to say during this meta that we're in right now and in the meta that I feel like will come in a little bit. Um, remember that you can counter Farah better than just about anybody but Widowmaker. So if you hate Farah's, this is a good character to play. That's why I play a lot of her, because I hate a lot of the people that she counters, like Farah and Junkrat and stuff. Um, she does counter Farah probably even more than Widow, but don't go after the Farah until she comes up pretty close. And don't go after the Farah until she pushes up with her teams. I see so many Divas just jumping into the enemy backline, hoping that, that they can get the Farah and somehow get out after using their booster. That's not really going to work for yourself. You're probably just going to die. So play smart and, you know, just play a little bit further back next to your front line until the Farah finally comes up close and then go after her and then go try to kill her. As well, one final thing I want to say is that you do want to just try to keep um, your ideas just all over the place. You want to make sure that you're always looking left and right, up and down, that you're always trying to figure out where the enemy flankers are and trying to counter them as much as you can because that's a really good benefit for this character as well. But anyways, that's all I'm going to say about D.Va. I feel like she's a super fun character, probably one of the better characters in the game right now, and probably my favorite one to play um, during this season, at least for right now. So there you go with that. Thank you all for watching, though. Hope you enjoyed. Hope any of these tips helped you, as these are probably the things that I feel like are helping me the most win games. I think I still have a 76% win rate with uh, quite a few hours on D.Va, so let's hope that I can eventually get to Masters with that. And maybe with some of these tips, you will be able to also. Anyways, as always, guys, though, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Press the subscribe button or that notification button to see more videos like this in the future. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.